date, and um, we support this, this bill in its second reading. I call Jenny Markroft. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a privilege to stand and speak on behalf of New Zealand First on this, the Exclusive Economic Zone and Continental Shelf Environmental Effects Amendment Bill. And I too will take a relatively short call on this as we proceed this bill uh, through the House. I'd first like to uh, make note of Minister David Parker and thank the Minister for bringing this bill to the House. And noting that he mentioned that um, the original act, uh, this is why this amendment needs to happen, uh, had a bit of a shambolic passage through the House. But he also noted, uh, to his credit, that the former chair of the Select Committee, um, actually it was not his fault. Um, so that was uh, good to hear that as well. Uh, it, it was an overly complex um, act, the original one, um, and definitely more work needs to be done on that and we will be seeing that work come through the House um, at some later stage. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, from the Environment Committee my fellow colleague, the Honourable Scott Simpson, for your contribution on this bill today. I uh, appreciate, as a new member uh, to the House and have not been here in the previous uh, Parliament, um, your contribution um, as, it, as uh, you saw it uh, coming through the, the House, the original Act, so thank you for that. Uh, in fact, it's really a pleasure to work in the Environment Select Committee um, on, on pieces of legislation like this where we can work together effectively and collaboratively. Um, that's really something that I'm really enjoying being a part of, of that team, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, just noting this bill, as uh, has been mentioned already by all the previous speakers, this is a sensible a uh, housekeeping piece of legislation. It has a very narrow scope and it corrects an error. So there is no point uh, delaying the passage through the House. It will amend the Exclusive Economic Zone and Continental Shelf Environmental Effects Act 2012. And uh, the Minister for the Environment will be able to recover the costs of a board of inquiry when an applicant applies for a notifiable marine consent. Now, those costs of the Board of Inquiry, they are substantial. They can go into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's why, Madam Speaker, it is important that we tidy up this piece of legislation so that the taxpayer, uh, the Crown, doesn't have to foot the cost of those uh, Board of Inquiry um, costs. So uh, as we look through through this piece of legislation, as it came into the Select Committee, uh, we noted that uh, we did not seek to have submissions on it, but we did hear from uh, the New Zealand Law Society and their contribution to this piece of legislation, uh, although it was asked to be a shortened, truncated uh, process, it was actually ending up being quite important that the Law Society, the contribution that they made, and I note that um, they pointed out one amendment uh, to this amendment, and that will correct a cross-referencing error. It is a very tiny, tiny, very minor uh, cross-referencing error, but uh, wouldn't it be a tragedy to have an amendment and then to have to find another amendment if we didn't get through this, uh, this piece of legislation through the House with this correction? So the cross-referencing error uh, comes through in number four uh, in section 14, replacing parts three and four with, uh, and then we delete the part three. So it will just read with three A and four. So very tiny amendment there that the uh, Law Society pointed out, which was uh, a very fortunate thing that we did have that period of time where they could make a submission. This amendment bill will enable the Minister for the Environment to recover the costs of the Board of Inquiry, but it also will enable the Minister to delegate power to the Environmental Protection Authority to recover the real and actual costs on his behalf. And that's a, a very important part of the process. Mm. I won't uh, delay any further uh, my contribution to the House, other than noting that uh, the government will be introducing a range of other short-term changes to the RMA over the next uh, period of over the year, um, and a more comprehensive, longer-term view of the resource management system uh, will be considered next year. So. Uh, people uh, who have been, in fact, there has been one submission um, which will have a board of inquiry. Uh, the first application, in fact, to the EEZ 
uh, Board of Inquiry process has recently been lodged. So that already is underway, but there will be no further uh, once this piece of legislation uh, passes through the House. So we cannot penalise people who in fact have played by the rules, but this is a cost which will go into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, and it's really great that we'll be able to get this uh, through the House over the course of the next few days so that there will be no further cost burden to the taxpayer. That's right. um, the Environment Minister, as I mentioned, will be introducing more of these amendments uh, as the Government proceeds logically to tidy up uh, these other pieces of legislation mm. that need some technical fix-ups. Uh, New Zealand First, in conclusion, Mr Speaker, uh, supports the economic, uh, exclusive economic zone and continental shelf environmental effects yeah. amendment bill as being a very sensible piece of housekeeping legislation. It's the first step in correcting a series of legislative mishaps and pointing towards more important work on the Resource Management Act. And so I commend this bill to the House. Yeah, yeah. Excellent speech. Um, I call Erica Stanford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm pleased to take a call on the exclusive economic zone.